So let's have a look at the special permissions. Some people have a problem understanding set user ID. As I just explained, set user ID means that that the script or executable is run with the permissions of the owner of the script. So let me do an example and let's go to the home directory of user Lisa. And let me create a nice little shell script in here. Let's call it game. So as every shell script it should start with a shebang that indicates that it's a shell script and then we friendly say hi do you want to play a, a game we have the shell script wait and completely ignore the answer and execute a friendly command like this Okay, I hope I don't have to explain that this is a very dangerous shell script indeed. Now, in order to make this an executable script, which by default it isn't, uh, I need chmod plus x on game. And do an ls minus l and we can see that the script is now executable. Uh, you can imagine that it's a bad idea if I run it as root, but let's do it as use Lisa. So su minus Lisa to become Lisa and I do an ls and Lisa thinks, hey, this is nice. This is this nice little game. Let's run it. Okay. What is, on the, what is important to understand is what will happen if Lisa is actually going to start this game. Well, basically, she will start the game as Lisa. So, if the script is going to try to remove many files, it will do it as Lisa and as no one else. So, the worst thing that can happen is that Lisa, her home directory, is wiped and everything else where she has permissions to write to will be gone as well. And that is bad, but not that bad, because only things that Lisa has right permissions to are affected. Now let's do set user ID. So in order to understand set user ID, we need to have a look at the properties of the file. You can see it is owned by user root and it is owned by group root. Set user ID means that if the file is executed, it will execute uh, as the owner of the file. So to set set user ID, I would do chmod u plus s on game. Let's do an ls minus l and you can see that this is marked in red, which indicates that something uh, potentially dangerous is going on here. And now let's become Lisa again and Lisa sees this file again. Oh, how nice. Let's play a little game and can you imagine what happens? Okay. That is why you don't want to use set user ID anytime. In my 22 years uh, with Linux, I have never had an occasion where set user ID was the only uh, solution for a problem. Don't use it ever. Set user ID is only applied to some system files. Let me show you that. To find those files, I'm using find slash minus perm, which will find on which will find files based on their permissions slash 4000, which means that the first digit in the permission settings must be a four, which, as you've just seen, is set user ID, and the other ones we don't really care. We see a couple of error messages. And then we see a list of files that do have set user ID for very good reasons. Now one of those files is user bin passwd. That's the binary that allows users to change their password. Let's analyze why. Let me do ls minus l user bin passwd first. You can see the S on the position where you normally see an X for execute for user indicates that it is set user ID. Now, why does passwd have set user ID? Well, that is because the password has to be written to the etc shadow file. 
And as you can see, there's no permissions whatsoever on the ETC shadow file, which means that only a root can access the ETC shadow file, which is good. But if a user wants to change his password, it needs to be written anyway to the ETC shadow file. And that is why the user takes a root permission at the moment that user bin passwd is running. And there's nothing wrong with that because passwd is a well-written program and it has securely been, been analyzed and there's nothing wrong with it. So basically uh, there are some system binaries that contain set user ID and keep it like that and never ever uh, try to, to use set user ID permission on anything else. Now as we have learned there are two other special permissions that are important. Uh, I have explained set group ID which is basically the same as set user ID so you're not going to use that. What you are going to use is the set group ID on a directory. So let me show you how it works. I'm becoming Lisa. Before doing that, I'll use ID on Lisa and we can see that Lisa is a member of Sales. Now I don't want Lisa because she's a member of Sales and she's also the owner of the directory. You know what? Lisa is also a member of account. And given the fact that the group account is group owner of the directory account and the group account has read, write and execute on directory account, Lisa should be able to write files to the directory account. Let's try that. So I'm going to the directory account and as Lisa I'm creating a file using touch Lisa1. Let me do an ls-l and what do we see? Well, the file has been created with the user that created the file as the user owner and the primary group of that user as the group owner. Now what's wrong with that? Well, what is wrong with it is that the other members of the group account don't have any write permissions to the file and that's not really useful in a shared group environment. And that is why we have set group ID. So let me do chmod g plus s on the account directory. And let me do ls minus l. You can see the little s on the position where normally there's the execute for group. And let's become Lisa again. And go to the data account directory. Touch Lisa2 and ls minus l. And as you can see, the file is now automatically group owned by the group account. This is something very important for your exam because on the exam you might very well have a question that asks you to set up a shared group environment where all the members of the group will automatically get right permissions to any files created in a shared group environment. And if they ask you that, you have to do it by using set group ID permission. Now let me talk about the sticky bit. Sticky bit, as we've just seen, is a permission that prevents users from deleting files which they don't own. So if sticky bit is set on a directory, a user can only delete the file if the user is owner of the directory or if the user is owner of the file. So let me check if we have anyone else who is in a group account. So grab account on etc group would help me find that out. So we have Lori. Lori is a member of account as well. So let's do su Lori. And as Lori I go to data account and I create some files. You can see that the group ownership is set correctly. Now what would be interesting is Lori allowed to execute rm-f on the file lisa1. Of course he is, because he is a member of the group account and the group account has write permissions to the directory and write permissions to the directory means that you can delete anything in that directory. Now the big question is if lisa is going to be happy with that. Probably not and that is why you need sticky bit. I'm just doing chmod plus t on star because sticky bit is something that you also want on any shared group environment. You can see an uppercase t on the position where there is normally an x for others. 
it's an uppercase because there's no X behind it. It's just sticky bit. It would be a lowercase if there's X behind it. Same goes, by the way, for the set group ID that we see here on the directory as well. It's a lowercase s because there's an X behind it, and it would be an uppercase s if there wouldn't be an X behind it. So, let me become Lori again. She goes to data account. She sees some files and she will do an rm minus f on Lisa 2, which is gonna be allowed. Now, why is that? Must be an obvious reason. Let's check. Hey, do you see that? Lori was the owner of the directory, and as the owner of the directory, she's allowed to remove any file from the directory. So doing this as Lori was a bad example. We want to do it as Lisa. So let's become Lisa. Let's go to data account. And let's do an rm minus f on Lori 1, which is not permitted, because of sticky bit. And that is why sticky bit is something you want on any shared group environment. By the way, we do have it by default on the system as well. Uh, if you do an ls minus l, you can see the little t on the TMP directory. Because TMP is a directory where anyone can write files to, and you typically only want the owner of the file to be able to remove a file if necessary. <laughs> 